supposed to be the time of your life. How does she do that, James? But for Louise Miller, high school was a living hell. From her first secret love. I just die. To her first blind date. Nobody wants to date you because you're a dog. A dog! A dog! Dave, Miranda's cousin. Ready? My life is a walking, talking tragedy. Give me some soul, Jesus, oh. baby. I wish you would just leave me alone. But just when nothing more could possibly go wrong. It's you. You're one of us. Me? A witch? Something wonderful went right. Now she's possessed with special powers. You can make anything happen. Like the way she That are simply bewitching. She can make her worst teacher hot. I will never be hit. And her best friend cool. Stop that. I don't really give a about Trump. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. Unreal. You can try to you blue. I will make a fool of you. Stop that. I want to be the most popular girl. You have the power to make anything you want happen. Can I make him love me? Love you? With me being your coach, he's gonna become your love play. Everybody dreams, but Louise's dreams all come true. Astra, Barbas, Tetragrammaton, Dios, Ishnos, Apetos. What? It's a uh, uh, new YouTube song. Team Witch. With it is a magical feeling. Welcome to the Cult Cinema Circle Podcast. My name is Jesse, and I'll be your host. Now, on today's episode, we're going to be covering a little movie from 1989, a witchy good time, if you will. Uh, but today we're going to be covering uh, 1989's Teen Witch. But, you know, I couldn't do this alone, and you just heard her snicker in the background a little bit. But today we have on uh, one of the MVPs of this show, because she's one of the people who uh, I can get to guest really quickly and easily. Uh, but you've heard her on my episodes for Clueless, Cruel intentions, dirty dancing, all that stuff. Um, but please welcome back to the show, Sarah Heidelberg. Hey, Sarah, what's up? Not much. Laughing at your witchy joke that you just made. My witchy witchy joke, yeah. yeah. We're recording in person today because we came over, you came over for sports, and we won sports, apparently, which is nice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and we're recording in the same room, too, so that's nice. Um, we haven't done one of those in a while. We haven't done one of those in a while. It's been a little bit. I don't, I don't feel like coming to your house sometimes. And it's okay. Don't come here sometimes which is fine i don't really care this is the first time there we go yeah there you go go. um but yeah so i wanted to cover this movie because it is turning 35 this year where you're like oh wow i was born the same year also i was going to mention that when you said it was 1989 that is my year of birth if y'all don't know yes of course this is gonna be turning 35 as well as i am in september once it's turning it's april yeah, April is when it came out. So you're hearing it this in April. So yeah, we're recording this right at the end of March. So, but yeah, so. 35 years. I know, right? It's crazy. crazy. But uh, what I want to know, Sarah, is uh, what is your. <laughs> I kind of know your history a little bit, but for the listeners out there who will find this episode, you know, what what is your history with this movie? Because I thought it was kind of funny and it was the express reason I wanted you on here a little <laughs> bit. But uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. So my memory of this movie is I watched it probably between the ages of 8 or 10, somewhere in that region. And it probably came on TV, on cable or something. And I watched it and I was like, okay. Like, I just remember watching it through and was like, okay, this movie's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. And then I forgot about it, like, as you do. As you do, yes. And or maybe I was even younger. I don't even know, but I remember not remembering the movie. Like, I remember watching it and then you're a kid, so you, like, don't remember right. stuff, really. 
So then, like, years later, it came on somewhere. I don't even know where it came on. And I watched it, and... I was like, I remember this movie. I was like, something is is very reminiscent about this movie that's like holding like a pre- yeah. like a space in my brain that like like is in the back of my brain. What is it? And I watched it and I'm like, I remember this. And I was like, oh my. And then I was like, what is this movie called? And I, you know, saw that it was called Teen Witch. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it's so funny because I remember watching this when I was younger, but I couldn't tell you who was in it. I couldn't right. tell you the plot. I don't even know if I knew that she was a witch. Maybe I did. I don't even remember. But like, <laughs> right. it's just so funny because I feel like that happens a lot when you're younger. You watch something, a show or a movie. Mm-hmm. I did it with Full House. Like, I knew I loved watching Full House right, back right. in the day. And I just thought it was, you know, because I think it was just like kind of meant for like that, like those ages, like those kid ages and stuff like that. It mm-hmm. could be funny for the adults too. But I didn't know it was called Full House. I didn't right. realize what it, like phenomenon it was. And then like years later, I was like, oh my God, it was Full House. Yeah, it would be the like Mary-Kate and Ashley show, really. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I remember that. And then, um, so anyway, so I was like, oh, this is Teen Witch. And then I was like, okay, this is about this 16-year-old girl who's like, you know, you go, go over the thing. But, right. you know, she's she's a witch, turns it on her birthday. And yeah, I think I remember like the dance scene or something. Like, I think that's what struck out to me. Like, I don't know. Like, it's so, it's so random what your kid brain remembers. I know, right? Like, my kid my kid brain remembers like little piece, bits and pieces of me being like five or six at Disney World. Mm-hmm. Doesn't remember the whole thing, but just remember like, like the, and like that's how I felt with this movie. Right. So anyhow, so then I was like, got it. It's Teen Witch. It's this, and like I I rewatched it all the way through, and I'm like, okay. So that's my memory of it. It was yeah. just kind of like it felt to me like a fever dream because yes. I was like, you know what? Maybe. I dreamt this. Maybe this isn't actually a movie. Right. Maybe this was a show or it was a TV movie or whatever. I couldn't tell you. It literally felt like a fever dream. And I feel like a lot of us feel this way with sh- like, sh- like random shows that might have got like one season or a random movie that came out. That's right. how it felt. But I was like, this wasn't real. And then I'm like, nope, it was. And it's like, I got deja vu. It was like, the, it, was, it was one of those funny feelings you get sometimes right. when you have deja vu and you're like, oh my God, I remember this. What is this? Oh, yeah, I remember Too that. Funny. Yeah. I was talking to you earlier about like something that was like on, what was it? It was like a... It it was some TV show or videotape about like fairies yeah. from like the 90s and we watched it at our like grandparents house or whatever but I was literally like I don't fucking remember what this and he's was. he's puzzling me. I'm trying to like help him like I was like was it this? Was it this? And you're like no no and I'm like oh my god. That's it's... gonna bother me. I'm gonna find it out for you. Okay please do. Yes, and report back. Um, but yeah I mean my history with Teen Witch is this was a recent watch for me within the last at least like probably a year ago or something. You actually came by the house and we actually watched 13 going on 30 together at the same time. That that's right. That's another one we did. Yes, we did. Very and uh, <laughs> But I told you about it, and that's when you first told me that this felt like a fever dream to you. So it was, oh, okay. But yeah, I, I also like when you were talking, I was definitely like, you know, those vroom vroom in the background. You know what, baby? We are in Baltimore right now. And this neighborhood, we they love to vroom all over the place. Mm-hmm. But anyway, but yeah, that Sorry was my, yeah, no, you're good. Uh, my literal experience, um, I edit the best I can. You know, it's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is real life life everybody Mm -hmm. but uh but yeah and i i liked my experience with this movie i liked the watching it i mean is it a good movie uh no maybe not uh but yeah i will say i um i obviously rewatched it on tubi because it was on there um about a week ago and i was like oh let me refresh myself because it's been maybe a few years since i've actually watched it in full again Mm mm-hmm and that may have been the time I rediscovered it, but I can't say for sure. Funny enough, I went to, um, a couple years back, I went to FYE, right. the store where you can buy CDs, DVDs, right, you know, right. merchandise, stuff like that. And um, I bought it, and I think it was used, but I do own it. I do own too much. So I was like, oh, let me get it. And it was like $5. I was like, why not? Anywho, um, I did watch back, it was on Tubi, and I watched it you know, all the way through again. And, um, you know, I watched it, and I was like, okay, this is, um, I guess maybe even since I was younger, you know, it's like you really don't understand or really kind of know what you're watching sometimes. Right. Um, sometimes music or like dancing like, might catch your attention or something mm. like that. And that is, we were rewatching and I was like, okay. All right. <laughs> like this was, this is an okay movie. Like nothing right. to write home about. It sounds, that sounds horrible. Like no, no, no chain to Robin Lively. Right. So, uh, Zelda. Uh, Zelda Rubenstein, Rubenstein, yeah. Like, no shade to these people, but I was just like, this movie is okay. Oh, yeah. And, like, the logic of this movie makes absolutely no sense, but it's fine. Like, and there is none. As really. me and Jesse spoke earlier, we were talking about it real quick, um, before, you know, like, a couple hours ago. Right. And we were talking about, like, being a fever dream, and he was talking about that, you know, show or movie he watched where he's like, the fairy thing. 
Now, I was telling him, I said, you know, it's funny that this was the movie that I was like, fever dream. I didn't, I know I watched this and I could not remember the life of me, what it's called, who was in it. Like, I really couldn't tell you anything about the movie. So if I was trying to explain this to somebody, right. they're going to be like, looking at me like I have five pets. But I was telling him that Sabrina the Teenage Witch, right. it was, if you non-millennial people would know or not know, Sabrina the Teenage Witch that has Melissa Joan Hart started with a TV movie. Mm-hmm. And it had Sabrina the Teenage Witch as the title character, as the witch it does, it's in the name. And then it had her aunts that she loves with. And then, did they have Harvey? It did. I think it had Harvey, but that was, I don't know if it, it did was, actually. It, it wasn't like the Harvey look from the show. Yeah. Anywho, um, Seth was the name of that guy, and that was played uh, by Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I do know a young Ryan. A young Ryan Reynolds was in that before he probably got really. And did you know um, on the TV show? So for anybody who's watched the TV show before, um, you would remember her friend Jenny. Mm -hmm. So Jenny, the actress that was curly hair. Yes, that one was actually in the movie with her under another name, and then she started. She was with the um, the the show in the first season. Yeah, I knew the ants were different because they end up like. Um, recasting them yeah. yeah Caroline Ray and uh, Beth Broderick Beth Broderick was the ones that were in the show who I think are so not, they might not be the OGs but like they played they just that was the, oh, they're the, the funniest they were the great they were greatest anyway nothing can hold a candle to Miranda Otto in the chilling adventures of Sabrina and then the Lucy whoever who played not the to cut this like completely like the other way and it doesn't really have anything to do with Team Witch but it kind of does in a way you know what um, it's fine it's okay because I, I literally Barbie just messaged me something or she just sent me a like a, a Something on Instagram. Shout out Barbie. Um, I was just talking to her today as well. Shout out Barbie. Shout out. Shout out Tasha. I know you're listening. Um, <laughs> you will be listening anyway. Sorry. Um, so anywho, um, back to what I was going to say. So yeah. So the movie was Sabrina the Teenage Witch, and yes. it kind of like the same concept. She was regular she, girl. She was regular girl. You know, just kind of like normal, like this girl is. Like nothing. You know, not on the cheerleading team. You know, she's yeah, kind of artsy, yeah. you know, in the drama club or whatever. I'm not sure if that was about Sabrina, but who, whatever. Had her friends. And, you know, she liked the cute guy, you know, she liked the Seth guy. And, um, yeah, she finds out she's a witch on her 16th birthday mm-hmm. and all this good stuff. And then I was telling Jesse that I was like, I think that I got Teen Witch and, like, the TV movie for Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Like, it's I fair. think I, like, mesh them together. And I'm Absolutely. like, they're one. Because, you know what? I bet you if I watch the Sabrina the Teenage Witch, I'm like, I remember this, too. Oh, absolutely. It's so funny how, like, I feel like I, maybe, like, they were, like, maybe mushed into one movie. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, anyway, we were talking about that earlier, and he, he laughed, and I was like, I, I feel like that. Because there's, there's, like, a dance scene in that one, too. Oh, completely, yes. Which, obviously, right? And there's, like, a locker room scene, and, like, but not the locker room scene with I Like Boys. Oh, which we'll, we'll get you, to it. You will get to that, because the thing it. you told me in that text message was hilarious. Anyhow, <laughs> so back to the, un- well, what I'm going to tell you is uh, kind of sad, but anyway, okay. back to the Sabrina the Teenage Witch, like that was something I remember because it was like 96 or 97 it came out. So uh-huh. I was like yeah, a couple years old, you know, yeah. like five, six or seven, eight, nine years old. Anywho, so I feel like those got like meshed together. Like yeah. I feel like they were like one movie, but they were, they were two separate, completely different completely. movies. Completely. They were like what, like seven years apart? Eight years yeah, apart. something like that. Anyhow, so let me go off topic and then go back on topic. So That's unfortunately, fine. our our friend Barbie, our friend, our sister, uh, who we love, she sent me a article uh, in, in from Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, uh-huh. the show that ran for a couple years on Netflix. Yeah, that had Kieran Shipka, Ross Lynch, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. The guy that played Ambrose, mm-hmm. so the familiar to he was kind of like the Salem character, right? No. Oh no, maybe not. No, 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 no. He was he was her cousin. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Her familiar was a cat, but he was just a black cat. I don't even think he talked. Yeah, I. This was he was the one who was like he was real, a warlock, right? Yeah, pansexual and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He he died. He died. He did. I did I, see that. She sent me. She sent me that earlier, and I was like, "What?" She because you know sometimes you get things on Instagram, it, it had like a picture, and I'm like. I looks familiar. And, you're like, oh, no. and I was like, and then and then it was like, and then it was like one of those slides or whatever. And I yeah. was like, okay. And I was like, what did you send me this for? for? You know, for a second. And then I read it, and I'm like, oh. and then she was like, she was like, this is sad. And I was like, like, is he like hurt? Like I wasn't sure that. He, and then when I read the things that they passed, like, I'm like, dead. oh my gosh. Yeah. So completely kind of off topic to the team, which but the, but since we brought up Sabrina, and then obviously the Sabrina Chilling Adventures you just right. said, I was like, wow, I literally just. I'm found sorry, it out, like, they're all they all live in the same neighborhood to me. Okay, exactly, exactly. <laughs> like literally, they really yeah, do. Yeah, so um, you know. Obviously, rest in peace. Uh-huh, you know, yeah. 
thoughts and prayers for his family. I don't know what it was. A sudden passing, I think I read. I but... believe it was a motorcycle accident. It makes it all the more tragic. Oh, no. Yeah. I didn't know all that. So it wasn't like he was a... I don't think he was addicted to anything. I don't I think he... I was just one of those things where it was himself. like, it we was are, just, yeah. you know, saddened to hear about the... Pa- that's kind right. of what I read. Not yeah, that's what, that's what I saw. Mm-hmm. So wow. I think it was just very tragic and unfortunate. Yeah. Thoughts and prayers, dude. Yeah. Like, he, he was good. I liked his character. I think his He's name fine. was Chance Perdomo or something. I, I believe so, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, uh, getting back to our movie Sorry of the day, that. but no, you're good because again, they all kind of live in the same neighborhood to me. But yeah, I mean, that was my experience. I just watched it very recently. Mm-hmm. So as we normally do on the show, we're going to talk a little bit about the production of this movie, go through the plot, break down the characters a little bit as we normally do. So for this movie in particular, let me pull up my little notes. This movie was released April 23rd of 1989. So that means you're hearing this right before its 35th anniversary. So that's always fun fun and nice uh 94 minutes not too long not too short thank god um and then they really could not have dragged this movie much out longer they really shouldn't have like i'm cool with it being 90 minutes like you're good trans world entertainment is the one who distributed this movie and it made about uh well it cost about two and a half million dollars to make what were you gonna say um did trans world what was it entertainment? Uh-huh. Did they have any other ones that they released? Any other type of movies? That's a good question. Wait a minute. Let me look real quick. Because um, I feel like these things are probably like not in business anymore. <laughs> no, they're not at all. Um, let's see. Their filmography. They did... I'm just curious. See. Ooh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Love oh, that. Okay. It's a good one. And they did Teen Witch. And, and that was it. That's about it. Oh, damn. Yep. Okay. Um, I don't think they did I was kind of kidding, else. but it actually was right. <laughs> yeah, no, they didn't really do a whole lot else. Anyway, so, um, yeah, that was that. Now, this movie, let's just say, did not do well financially. On its opening weekend, it made about $3,875. Came in at number 18. And that then, is crazy. I know. And the domestic... Uh, and worldwide box office really is $27,843. Wow. So needless to say. Sorry Teen Witch but that is not oh, good numbers. It was bad. I um, think the only other worse well I'm sure there's probably ones that are less than that yeah. but like the Trojan War. Trojan War the one that I have watched before. The one that with Ro- Will Friedle. <laughs> yes and Marley Shelton. Yeah. That we are definitely doing on the show sometime. <laughs> Because that movie made $300. That's crazy. Period. That's- and Jennifer Love Hewitt. Wait a minute. Yeah. And, yeah. And that is... And the girl from, um, what's her name? Liz Purr from Jawbreaker. She's also in there. Uh- yeah. It's been very, 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 oh my god, like, it's long a crazy times I watched that. And also, that's like $300. Like, people like people have like more than that in their bank accounts. Oh, girl. That's it's, crazy. That had to be something where it's always something with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, for sure, for sure. So, this movie has about a 43% on Rotten Tomatoes from critics, about 20 reviews. And then um, 74% from audiences, with about 10,000. I think this is really from just like the camp and ironic sense of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, so, that makes sense. And then it's clocking in at a 2.9 out of 5 on Letterboxd. You also gotta use your letterbox a little bit more, but that's okay. I'm not worried about it. Wait, oh, I have, well, for a minute there, I was watching some, um, some, sh- some movies and that I hadn't seen before that I did rate, but, but it's, I don't do it. Yeah, it's okay. All right. Did I rate Teen Witch? I don't remember. I don't remember. You probably didn't, but it's okay. okay. So the director of this movie is Dorian Walker, and he's really only known for this movie. It's kind of a one and done thing he did, and we'll talk a little bit about him um, in regards to this. The writers of this movie are Robin Mencken and Vernon Zimmerman. They really only ever did another movie called Fade to Black, which was from the 80s. It's a little horror movie. It's on Shudder. Uh, I have only watched like some of it, but I haven't watched all of it by any means. So that's what they did. They actually came out of doing comedy together, I believe. Um, So that's how they kind of got together as writing partners. Uh, Composer for this movie is Richard Elliott and Larry Weir. So they made all the wonderful uh, musical numbers in this movie. Um, And they're really only known for this movie. Um, And then cinematographer is Mark uh, Roveski, I guess, uh, is what it looks like at least. Uh, He did uh, Set It Off. Have you ever seen Set It Off or heard of it? The Uh... one with Queen Latifah and Jada Pinkett Smith. I think I've heard of it. I've never watched it. It's pretty good. It's like a heist movie. These ladies, these four black friends, uh, female Ooh. friends, they uh, rob banks because, you know, they're trying to get out of poverty. And it's a whole thing. So it's pretty good. And then Sorority House Massacre, which you know is right up my alley. And I did my sorority horror episode. We of talked about that did. a little bit. Yeah. But the same guy who shot this also shot that. Totally makes sense. 
So, um, and then Nathan uh, Zahavi is the editor of this movie. And the only other thing that I found that he edited was Cutting Class. Do you know what Cutting Class is? I've never seen it, but it is. You ever hear of it ever? No. Um, it is, I think, the film debut of a young Brad Pitt. So it was like his first movie he was ever What's in. it called again? Cutting Class. Mm, nope. Yeah, it's like a horror movie. Fun, fun little fact if you didn't know either. Uh, you never seen the Elvira movie, right? No. Oh, so uh, one of the things that she... Uh, go read Yours Cruelly Elvi- by Elvira. It's a great book. But she talks about how when she was casting for that movie and everything, um, a young Brad Pitt came in and she was like, well, I, well, I kind of wanted to cast him. And then um, she thought that he would be too hot for her to like be able to... Uh, pay it not pay attention to really um because bob is her actual love interest mm-hmm. and it'd be weird if elvira was in love with a teenager so she did not cast him that makes sense. but actually she ended up um apparently i think he ended up buying her house or something it was like a whole thing so she talks all about it in her book please read it if you are at all interested um but yeah it's a little bit about that, a little bit about our crew. Um, and then the cast is, well, we have Robin Lovely, Robin Lovely, Robin Lively as our titular teen witch, Louise Miller. So Robin Lively, have you known about her from anything else or? Uh, the only other thing, honestly, that I've seen her in is, the only thing I've seen her in that actually is way, actually way more recent than this was I watch the show 911 mm-hmm. and it's got a spin-off series type thing where it's got 911 Lone Star. So 911 is set in California, 911 Lone Star is set in Texas. Of course. And the um the 911 Lone Star is set in Texas. So it's these these like EMT firefighters. Um I think it's got police in there too anyway. Mm-hmm. If anybody I'm sure people have watched these shows yes. they're pretty popular. <laughs> Anywho, um there's a one guy in there who uh is married to one of the 911 dispatchers and he had been with he's been with her a really long time and they I don't even know how this plot came up, but anywho, he had apparently dated somebody i don't think they were married but i think he had dated somebody when he was younger like 18 19 years old and maybe she came forward or something oh i think this kid wanted to like meet him and he was like he's saying he's my son and he was like okay he's like i don't think he's like that's not right he's like oh you know somebody's just trying to come back and say Mm -hmm. you know i have child support or something crazy like that um come to find out uh, you know this is son you know i guess this lady that he was the girl he was with never said anything to him or whatever and uh anyway the one the the one who plays guy's mom is robin robin lively we love that so this is god i think it was like two seasons back or two years ago so it was like so she kind of like when his character needs to come up or something like that you'll see her so she's been on maybe like two or three episodes mm-hmm. um but that's actually the only time i because i saw the name and i was like god she looks familiar but just older and I looked it up and I'm like, oh, I was like, she's t- oh, mm-hmm. okay. So that is, uh, honestly, I think the only other thing I've seen her in. Yeah, so she was also in, like, the Karate Kid Part 3. She's in Ouija. Oh my god, I feel so stupid. Um, <laughs> The other thing was, is I just thought about this, just literally as soon as you said Karate Kid Part 3. I, um, a couple years back, I I had watched the Karate Kids years ago, like, 10 plus years ago. And I was like, I, I was a like COVID time. It was like 2020 or something like that. And I actually wanted to rewatch them again because they were all on Amazon. And I did. I watched the first one, second one, third one. And when I watched the third one, he, she plays like a, like a little type love mm-hmm. interest with him and him, uh, with him, with Ralph Macchio. And yes, I remembered her from them. Um, so that's, I actually just watched that like three years ago or three or four-ish years ago. And uh, as soon as you said that, I completely forgot. But yeah, uh, so other than that and... Teen Witch, uh, 911 Lone Star. Yeah, exactly. There but you yes, go. thank you for reminding me of Karate Kid Part 3 because I completely <laughs> forgot actually until you just said that. And she was never on Cobra Kai or anything like that? Who knows? I will look for you real quick while you're talking, <laughs> but I don't know because I do know that um, Elizabeth Shue did come back for Oh, yes, episode. yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so look that up real quick. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so Robin Lively, her little sister is Blake Lively. Mm-hmm. Her older slash same age brother is Jason Lively, who was in Night of the Creeps, lovely movie. She is also married to the coach from the high school musical movies that's her husband in real life super fun um so yeah i mean she's just kind of been around she also has done um maybe back in her uh, younger years or whatever she also was an acting coach to some people so i think she was like uh acting coach to like britney murphy for a minute um she also uh I just found out this uh, not long ago, but I just watched it on YouTube. Um, 
like the one of the kids from the Brady Bunch movie actually went to her uh, for like acting training or like acting like you know huh. kind of a thing. That's kind of cute. Well, you know, she kind of in a way comes from an acting family, so Absolutely. It definitely is probably right up her alley. So yeah, it makes it. total sense. Um, but yeah, so uh, let me know when you find that. But I'm gonna move on a little bit. I'm sorry. What, were you, what, what was the thing I'm looking for again? Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. Thank you. <laughs> sorry. But yeah, you're good. She just literally has a lot of credits for like those little <laughs> one episodes where she's like she's making that money. Girl. In Cold Case, which I, I did like that show. Um, like, oh yeah, uh, Drew Carey show Thirty Rock. So she's just criminal wise. She's been like probably the little one episodes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Zelda Rubenstein, who uh, lovely gay ally, love her. Um, she's Tangia from Poltergeist. Love that. Oh, look, we got a dancer. She was in Cobra Kai. Oh, cool. Yep. I just I was you know I was like maybe I should just go from the bottom top because Cobra Kai is more new. And she played Jessica Andrews. Oh, cute. She's a fictional. So Jessica Andrews was a fictional character portrayed by Robin Lively in the film the Karate Kid Part 3 and in the fifth season of its sequel series Cobra Kai I will tell you that I I do like that show actually I didn't think I would like it but there you, go. you know I think what happened was is I heard about Cobra Kai oh it's really good you know that, <laughs> and I was like and I started watching it the first season and I think I was like oh, I actually kind of really like this so I think what I did then is I then that's what made me want to rewatch like the Karate Kid the Karate movies. Kids right 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 and so I did, and I think it's actually ending, but, uh, right. so she came in, so I think, you know what, I want to say the fifth season might have been the last one they did. They have, I think they have a sixth season that they're shooting or it needs to be released or whatever. But, um, I, I hate to say this, but I couldn't tell you who she, like, what, what yeah. she did in the role in Cobra Kai, but yeah, yeah, she wasn't Yeah, there. I think they wanted to bring people back who were I'm sorry, I just notable. couldn't remember though that, you know. Absolutely, I, yeah. Clearly, I, I, I barely remember she was in uh, the third one. Yeah. So you said it. You then have uh, Dan Gother, who plays uh, Brad. Yeah. Oh, Brad. <laughs> we'll get to him in a minute. Oh, God. <laughs> but uh, he was in Son-in-Law with Polly Shore. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, I have funny, uh, funny, funny story with that. Uh, I, that's a really funny movie. I I like Polly Shore. He's pretty funny. He's not bad. And it's got um, Tiffany Thiessen. Oh, yes, yes. Well, Tiffany, she probably was Tiffany Amber Thiessen. Tiffany Amber Thiessen. But she used by Tiffany Thiessen now. Let me just tell you, she doesn't age. Oh, I know. It's like her and, like, literally Christine Taylor. That bitch does not age either. They don't age, and they're, like, beautiful. Oh, my God. Because they they were, like, everybody's, like... She was just on Melissa Joan Hart's podcast, because I listened to that, and I watched it every so often. It doesn't look any different. Right? So she was in the Son of Law movie. But anyway, Son of Law was... Definitely, yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. And I hadn't watched it in a while, and I watched it on Hulu a couple months back, and it was really funny. And well, I, you saw I the Red it. Hot Lover Brad. Yeah, and, um, <laughs> yes, yeah, Brad's cute, so I, I definitely don't blame Louise. Oh, at all, yeah. And I have it in my notes, but her, him, and Randa in this movie, uh, Lisa Fuller, I believe her name is. Is that the one that played his girlfriend? Yeah, the yeah. one who's Randa. They are married in real life and still are together today. Really? They got together, like, not too long after this movie. Really? Yes! They're I still together, that. girl. <laughs> yep. So the girl who actually played his girlfriend. Yes, Randa. The one across the street is and the wife. And they've been together for, like, 35 years. Like, literally, or like, years. maybe, yeah, like, something years. like, yeah. Wow! Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, cool. The fun things you learn here on the Cult Cinema Circle podcast. Yes, exactly. Uh, but, but yeah. Oh, also, was he in um, Melrose Place? You know what? I prop uh, Hold, please. Hold on. Sorry, we're clearly prepared. Oh, absolutely. I yeah. only... Because I did look his, him up a couple days ago after I watched the movie, and I think he was in Melrose Place. But Melrose Place and Beverly Hills 90210 used to be stuff our mom watched. Oh, absolutely. Yes, he was on Beverly Hills 90210 and Melrose Place. Oh, dang. He played Dick Harrison uh, in season seven on 90210, and then he played um, Jeff Baylor, which was a recurring cast on uh-huh. six and seven. Uh-huh. Yep, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, girl. Mm-hmm. Okay, I thought so. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right. Okay. Um, anyway, so then you have Joshua John Miller playing Louise's brother. Oh, God. Homosexual in real life, by the way. He wrote a movie called The Final Girls. Like, it's... Yeah, he's fucking... Do you know who his um, fun little fact, if you didn't already know? So he was in this movie. He was in um, Near Dark, which is a vampire movie uh, by Catherine Bigelow. And then also Season of the Witch, the Halloween 3 with uh, Michael Myers in it. Um, He's in there. But his... um, So his mom was in the movie Faster Pussycat Kill Kill um, as like a young lady. But his... I think 
I guess dad, I, I'm guessing. I think him and him and Jason Patrick are half brothers because their dad is uh, Damien Karras from The Exorcist. That's their oh, father, really? respectively. Yes. Wow. Yeah. The more you know. The more you know. So yes, yeah, that's, and he is such a homosexual in this movie, even though he's like 10 or like 12. You know, when he played, well, when he was like, cause he shows up like, what, five minutes into the movie? Oh, absolutely. And I was like, he is interesting. He made some choices, and I appreciate that for him. He is just, into a dog. Oh my god, he turns into a dog, and it's a whole thing. <laughs> Nobody wants... You think you're so fancy because you went to a dance. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody wants to date you because you're a dog. A dog. A dog. It's so good. Oh my god. He is such a wonderful mo. Anyway. So funny. Uh, Dick Sargent plays her dad. Uh, do you know who Dick Sargent is? He was yeah. the second Darren, yes. Yeah, so it was the first Darren and then the second Because that's what the TV shows did back in the day. They would just be like, well, we're just going to switch the home. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, he be watched. I don't remember. Whatever. One of those shows. Yeah. I think. Um, and then Marsha Wallace. Do you know who Marsha Wallace is? She plays the drama teacher. You know, by name? No, I would be like, I don't know who that is. But uh-huh. by seeing her, yes, I... The red hair. Uh-huh. Red curly hair. Yeah. Yes. Uh, she looked really familiar when she came on. I was like, this lady looks so familiar. She was in Full House. She was in Full House. Not um, active character, but she might have did like one or two. Three yeah, episodes. she was like a teacher or something. Yeah. yeah that, that would I make remember, total sense. I remember like her and Kimmy did like a... Kimmy Gibbler, her and Kimmy Gibbler did like some something with bikes or whatever. Like bikes were stolen in one of these episodes. Oh, completely. Yeah. They're like we're trying to find these because, of course, you know, Full House. It had to like start, you know, something and then yeah. something crazy happened and then you know tied up in a nice little bow at the end as yeah. these all these family sitcoms do. But she was also in it for like a couple. Then she like Joey. I don't know. It's something, yeah. But yeah, I uh, I do remember, because I was like, she was in Full House. So mm-hmm. that, that's all I know of her. Yeah, so she was also in the Brady Bunch back in the day, I believe. Um, like, the OG show? Yeah, I think so. Really? And she's also the voice of Edna Krabappel on The Simpsons, and also just like was on The Simpsons cast. Is that one of... Bart's teachers, that's like the main teacher? No, I was going to say, is she... <laughs> she's not one of the she... main people, No, no, but, no I was yeah. going to ask if she was one of um, Marge's sisters. No, well, no, I feel like, in a way... I feel like she was not. Hold, please. Wait a minute. Okay. These are all things that we I did not know Sarah was bringing to the conversation, I'm but that's so okay. She next, was on Full House. You're right. Next time I do a podcast, I should be like, you get your <laughs> shit together. That's what we're talking about. No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, no. Did she? I don't think she did, to be honest. I feel like Julie Kavner did a lot of those, oh, okay. um, who is the voice of her, obviously. But yeah, no. I She mainly did, I think, uh, Edna Krabappel, pretty much. Good job. Yeah, good, good time. And then Lisa Fuller, like I said, she's Randa. She is married to to Brad in real life. Um, she was in the Monster Squad. And also, I feel like you saw this movie, Earth Girls Are Easy. Yes. Is that the one with... Um, Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis. Yeah. I think then, it's got Damon Wayans, mm-hmm. Jim Carrey. Yeah. And Julie Brown, I think, is in there. The yeah. You know her, Miss Stoger. Yeah. Um, I think that you should watch that movie. I will. And it's it, on the list. I feel like it might be a cult classic. Yeah, it's on the list. Okay. I want to watch it. Uh, don't you? Don't you I worry. They're aliens or something. I don't know. They yeah. are aliens. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it's been a long time. But I watched it. Yeah. So this movie opened alongside Field of Dreams and also Pet Cemetery. It never um, had a chance at the Oh, it office. really didn't. And it was also um, up against Say Anything and Heather's as well. So they were all in the theater. Literally, no wonder it made three thousand uh, dollars. Twenty-seven thousand. <laughs> Okay, baby. Build of Dreams is like an iconic baseball movie. Right, right. Kevin Costner, I mean, you can't go wrong there. Recently watched that not too long ago. Pretty good movie. Ray Liotta. Uh, what was the other one? Say Anything, that John Cusack. Peter mm-hmm. Gabriel. I mean, you can't go wrong with the boombox over the head. I mean, iconic. Pet Cemetery. Crazy Stephen King. It's so good, yeah. So good. Um, you know, has the evil child that, mm-hmm. you know, cuts the guy. Cuts the, what's his yeah. name? The Herman uh, Monster character? Uh, uh, Judd. Yeah. What's the other? Uh, Heathers. I mean, Heathers, Winona Ryder. Well, that didn't do later. good, but yes, you're right. But it probably did good afterwards. Oh yes, yeah. absolutely. And what was the other movie? Yeah, it was those. It was Pet Cemetery, Field of Dreams, Say Anything in Heather. Yeah. So they were all kind so of insane. So they really same. had no chance. I mean, these were just like bangers, absolutely. yeah. And yeah, if you didn't already know either, um, so Madame Serena's house, if you didn't already know, uh-huh. I believe is the creepy house that is in the thriller video. Um, and if you look at it, really? like, yeah. Because if you look at it, you're I'll like, oh yeah. That out, yeah. So that's super fun. But those are my little little fun facts I had. Um, there's not too many of them, but you know, it's all good. But uh, let, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, and we know mm-hmm. Zelda 
Raven's Zelda. Name? Our girl from Poltergeist. Poltergeist. Step into the light, Carol Ann. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Marsha Wallace, unfortunately, passed away a few years ago. That's unfortunate. I know. I didn't know that. Yes, yeah, she did. Well, mm-hmm. you could have told me that before the pod. I'm sorry. Sorry, this he sprung this thing... to me. Just oh, I'm now. sorry. Well, you already know Zelda Raven's name is like, Yes, long, I knew that. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, she did. Dang, mm-hmm. that's not... Tragedy. Death. It's all around us. The baseline idea of this movie. So if you want to read like a good little article, you can find this on how did this get made um, on Slash Film. There's an article of it, of oh, Teen okay. Witch, where they talk to like the writers of this movie, mm-hmm. the director, all that stuff. So please go check that out. Did the director do anything? Or did you say, had you said that already? He only did this movie, he really. Only did this movie. Okay. And so the thing with him is that, so the idea for this movie was supposed to actually be a gender swapped version of Teen Teen Wolf, because Teen Wolf did yes, pretty good. Yes, I saw that. Um, but during this, it was reworked to be a standalone film, mm-hmm. and they decided, well, what could we make a lady? A lady can't be a werewolf, yeah, and she then could. whatever. <laughs> right? I think Twilight would say otherwise. And also Ginger Snaps. You gotta watch Ginger Snaps too. But yeah, but um, I'm gonna take a wild guess. They turn into werewolves. Uh, one of them does at least. Oh, one of them does. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it's the little girl from. Um, You're like fucking watch it. Yeah, watch it. Um, it's the little girl from it beverly on the tv uh, movie uh she plays one of the sisters oh, in the ginger one snaps. With the, with the, when, when they're when they're when they're young in the 60s mm-hmm. yeah really? yeah she's in ginger snaps and then the other um the one of the friends not monica kina in um freddie versus jason the but um one of her friends is ginger uh catherine mm. isabel so yeah I did an episode on that ginger long ago. snaps. Does that mean that Ginger snapped? She does snap, and oh, she um, okay. is uh, spoilers, but she's attacked by a werewolf. So, Sorry, guys. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much. But anyway, also Twilight, they had girls in there that turned werewolves. So exactly. There it you go. Can not just be that. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so they decided they wanted to they had this script already so mm-hmm. Robin Merkin and um, Vernon Zimmerman they already had this uh, written but the first draft was a lot more raunchy it was in more of the style of a scene, teen sex comedy a la Porky's or something like that mm-hmm. but Alana Ambrose Alana H. Ambr- uh, Lambrose and Dorian Walker uh pretty much took out the racy elements to make this a PG-13 movie. And they also wanted it's to very add... very teen-like, very teen-like. Absolutely. And they wanted to add um, musical sequences to be added into the script. Um, so Lambros had connections and met with Larry Weir, who was one of the Weir brothers, who ended up being the people who were the composers of this movie. They composed the song Popular Girl after their meeting and agreed to do the rest of the songs. And they also brought on Robert Benas, um, a dancer in West Side Story, to actually do all of the choreography for the dance scenes. Love hmm. that. Do you know who was initially supposed to be this role? Team which role? Yes. Think like eighty singer lady, young lady. Eighty singer Tiffany. Close. Debbie Gibson. Yep. They they wanted her at first, really? which would have been perfect, but negotiations didn't work out. So I wonder yeah. if she was saying it because she was a singer. Well, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. But negotiations just fell through. She, she couldn't be cast. But then, literal fifteen year old Robin Lively walked in, and they were like, oh. She, yeah, mm hmm. Oh. And it was like one of her first movies, I think. So that's kind of cool. This was shot all around LA, of course, um, November 25th of 1988. Um, so it was shot all around there. And yeah, an early cut of this was brought to the American film market to gauge the interest. And Moshi uh, Diamante, who was the guy who like owned um, Trans World Entertainment, mm-hmm. um, he mandated that more scenes needed to be added to increase the production value. Um, according to the producer, Lambert, um, he, just, the this guy said, uh, we need to make this picture bigger. We need to put more music and more scenes and all this. And this includes top that as a music, um, you know, cue. Also the love scene in the abandoned house as well. So those are not in the initial cut of the film. Oh, okay. But yeah, that's a little bit about the production. I, I, I will say this since you just brought it up. Uh-huh. Um, that um, scene in the abandoned house. Um, yeah. I do remember, funny enough, like I said, I was talking about Fever Dream. I do remember, like, a house, like a, like, abandoned, like, I remember the dance, I remember, like, the abandoned house, like, these are just things that stick out to me. Right. Um, just the abandoned house, like, not really, like, what happened in there, but, like, just an abandoned house. But, anywho, re-watching this just a few days ago, mm-hmm. and they're in the abandoned house, and didn't he take off his shirt? I think he did. I think he did. I was like, okay, okay, Brad. And you're kind of like, uh, this is a PG-13 movie, are okay, you really Brad, gonna, what are you, doing? Are you right. really gonna fuck in this abandoned right. house? Like, okay. Right. So, anywho, um, so, you know, they're, they're like, 
you know, like the music, whatever music's playing or whatever, and they're like following each other in the house or something. Oh like following yeah. each other. But um, I'm going to say this. I mean, you know, there's obviously like, especially like nowadays, like there's like so much more steamy. But it was like a little steamy, like, make out sesh. I'm like, okay. I know. I know. I'm like, dang. I was like, get it. Louise. Okay, Louise, you go, girl. Right. Go, girl. <laughs> oh my god. And the music of this movie, especially the porn saxophone. Holy but, like, shit. it was kind of just funny because, like, she was, like, I think she had, like, yeah, like, he had, like, a shirt off and, like, she was, like, in a dress or whatever. I'm like, this is interesting. Yeah, okay. Like, she's also, like, 15 in this movie. Right. Like, what the How fuck? old was he when he did it? He was probably, like, 47. I don't know. He was um, not. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, um, that well, would have been awkward. Oh, I know. It would have been so awkward. He was. Oh, he's probably, what, 17? Uh, 60. He was uh, born in 63, so this is. However old somebody would be in uh, 1988 from 1963, I guess. So, you know, uh, yeah, pushing 25, 26. Oh, dang. Yeah, like, I know. Like 10 years older than her? Literally. I'm pretty sure, actually. Wait. Yeah, a little, little weird. Absolutely, they're nine years apart. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oops. Oh, anyway. Um, but yeah, so. I feel like that just, a lot of shit like that slid back in the day. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We probably looked younger. Yeah, probably. Yeah, this movie was kind of, like, just ripped to pieces when it came out. Or it was just, like, not taken. Like, again, it didn't do that well financially. It just, you know... Clearly not. Clearly not. Um, But this movie has gained a cult status of sorts. Mm -hmm. It performed much better on home video and overseas. As I feel like a lot of some things, like, it was, like, not great at the box office. And then it comes out on home video, uh, as it used to. Um, back right. in the day and it just like blew up or got like preserve physical yeah. media everybody <laughs> Sarah can attest to this yes <laughs> uh, with her 200 like video mm-hmm. like DVD collection DVDs. yeah it kind of got this like cult status having gained newer younger audiences after being on like HBO Cinemax and the Disney Channel Jarrett Weiselman of the New York Post stated there are good movies there are bad movies there are movies that are so bad they're good and then there's Teen Witch a cult classic that defies classification thanks to a curious combination of songs spells and skin I wonder uh-huh. if the first time I watched it it was on Disney Channel I can say I can't can't say for sure if it was or not, but I'm wondering. Either that or that. Fox Family or ABC Family, probably. Could have been. It could have been. I'd probably ABC Family, honestly. Uh, now Freeform, okay. But <laughs> Joshua John Miller, uh, con- commenting on his involvement with the film as a character, Richie, uh, said, If you look at Teen Witch, it was a very campy performance, but it's really fun film and something I have grown to honor. Um, so this movie has, like, uh, had some, like, life with uh, Midnight Screenings. Also, um, How Did This Get Made, the podcast with Paul Shear. Mm-hmm. Um, they talked about this as well, this movie. There are parodies and homages to this movie, like, with Makes Top sense. That um, and all that. And, yeah, it's it's kind of, in a way, like, it's been on the, uh, it's been on the kind of, like, hocus pocus train of like being on abc family every like year on like the 13 nights of halloween not gonna lie i don't really see it on there it could be but it should be more I, it may have been in the past but i don't know if it's something they do like it's not one of the staples that are like literally on there every year i don't think i wish but they may have done it though in the past if you true get, like, look, yeah know. true but yeah <laughs> this is showing that sarah just watches the 13 nights of halloween i understand <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched it in a while, actually. But, yes, I have yeah, before. That shit was the best. Anyway, was. but, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but uh, let's let's talk a little bit about this uh, plot, I guess. I guess if you had to, like, TLDR what this movie was about, so Too Long Didn't Read, uh, how would you describe this movie to somebody who's maybe never seen it? Too Long Didn't Read. Um, I would say the movie is about a high school girl who is shy, likes drama mm-hmm. she's in that type of class of she's like not she's definitely not ooh, she's definitely not a popular girl she's not a cheerleader she's not in the sports she's nothing like that but she's definitely like a if you want to say like a drama nerd if you want to say that sure shy um has a good family and invisible yeah 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 very like you know wallflower can be yeah. you know is a good word for a good wallflower and you know she has a best friend as you know like they all like have a best friend in these Holly, movies yep. um it has a best friend and of course there's an apple of her eye uh mm-hmm. brad brad who is just he's just too hot to try it and yeah she um it's about the girl and you know you just kind of see her as like a like has a big crush and of course the guy doesn't notice her so mm-hmm. it's kind of always one of those things like oh he doesn't i want him to notice me and yeah so she, she 
apparently stumbles. So she's out at like the library or something like that one one day, and she stumbles across Madame is it Madame Serena, Serena Madame yeah. Serena's house. It was raining or something. Little old um, Zelda Rubenstein. Yeah, Zelda Rubenstein, who I guess would be Madame Serena, mm-hmm. brings her in, and she was like, "Oh, you know, come in here." And yeah, like she, she's like you know, telling her stuff, and then she was like, oh, like, you're the one. Mm -hmm. And, like, she wants her to, like, help her with stuff. Like, remember the part where she was, like, she did something, and then, like, she, like, had her say these things. Like, if you say these things, these things will happen. But anyway, so, yeah, like, she goes in there, stumbles across here, and she basically, like, this lady's like, you're a witch. And she was like, your birthday's next week. And she was like, yeah, how'd you know that? And she was like, well, I know. Like, I'm a witch, I know. So we were BFFs in the afterlife. Right, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and she's like, oh, see us, yeah. I totally forgot about that part. But yeah, she ends up finding out, of course, when she turns 16 the next week that she's a witch. And she goes to Madame Serena and she's like, you know, I want to be popular. I want Brad to like me. I want this, that, and the other. And yeah, I mean, she gets what she wants. She's, uh, I would say, if anything, she's like homely, like the way she dresses. Yes. You know, not like the tight clothing. She has like the sweaters and like the long skirts and right, whatever. Right, right, right. And, you know, the hair, you know, being a certain way, kind of like very like innocent looking. And Absolutely, yeah, yeah, she's like, you know, I want like the the like the body con dresses and I right. like the teased hair and like the makeup but yeah she just wants to be like the popular girl who's got the hot guy mm-hmm. and she's like you know I'm a witch I can make this happen so basically she like says these little chants and you know she becomes the most popular girl at school yep and you know everybody wants to be her or be her friend and like following her which is like so weird it's like oh let's like follow like there's 50 people follow her weird and then she like wants Brad to like her and then she does something and then she has the thing with the like bed around like she's like where's all your chairs and she's like let's sit on the bed and he's exactly like, he's like okay weird um any anyway, boot but um but yeah so like she wants him and yeah she, she gets what she wants mm-hmm. um but of course she wants brad to really like her she doesn't want to spell point on right her, because as all the girls do i want to really like as her. we learned from the craft that is not a good thing yeah let's not do that yeah let's not go back to like our craft episode where Ooh, yeah yeah he gets like super creepy um but yeah you know, she gets what she wants but then you know it kind of seems like she has everything she wants but then she like loses her best, best friend, friend in the process yeah. and it's like well like that's fucked up and but okay but here's the thing okay like sure so that was kind of like a long-winded thing but okay here's here here's what i'm thinking right she gets the the hot you know she gets attractive she gets you know popular she gets the boy the guy and then he really likes her but then like how does the end and they go to the like she's not back to what she was like she's still like i know she still has like the pretty hair the better clothes and then like people were still like oh like hey so did Louise. she just like learn how to be like this popular girl now and then, and then, did she, and then she's just like and sorry what was her friend saying polly sorry yeah. polly because polly like put her in her place she was like excuse me she was yeah but uh, it's kind of like it kind of didn't have like sometimes that those things happen like you know the girl's dudley and then she becomes yeah. popular and hot and everybody wants to be her and then of course something crazy happens she gets like two in her feelings or two up you know too pompous and yeah. stuff like that and then people have to bring her back to earth and they're like, well, you're only like this because this. And then, like, you kind of go back and be like, well, I've been I've been fine all along. Is like how it goes. Exactly. I didn't really feel like that with this movie. I felt like she got popular, got the guy, and then it was like... And then, then they, the end. And they were like... And then they were like, the end. And they were like, well, he really likes me. And I'm like... Yeah, okay. It, that's where I was like, this kind of movie, it's kind of kind of felt, felt fell for me. Like, yeah. it felt kind of like... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, it kind of felt flat for me yeah. there. But, um, but yeah, basically that's what I would say. Girl finds out she's sixteen. Uh, when she's sixteen, she's a witch. She has mm-hmm. these powers, and you know she wants to be the most popular girl in school. She wants the cute guy that she's been yep. eyeing since forever, and you know she gets what she wants. But you know at what price? You know, exactly. At what price to her friends that were her friends all these years? So, but again, then like it kind of goes to then she doesn't do anything with it. She's just like, okay, well, well, I guess I'm, you know, guess I'm popular. And hey, sorry for being a bitch to you, <laughs> right? To my best friend. <laughs> the end. I'm still like popular. I still am dressed cool. I still have the cute guy. So yeah, it's like what like, happens, right? It's like it didn't kind of like it really feel like it didn't tie it in a bow like nice sure. for me. So that's what I would say. I like that criticism, Sarah. You know what? That's how you feel. Yeah, living it, baby, living it. Yeah. So we'll run but through. Maybe the that's how plot. they made movies, though. Like maybe I guess, that's how they yeah. did that. And then they're like, well, let's like maybe like try and like <laughs> add some more character to this. Like let's give this character more depth and other like other not episodes like other movies right. and like actually tie shit up because this one just fell flat. Yeah, I I, I understand. Literally, like the last epi- like the last oh, I keep saying episode, the last like shot. scene, the shot is like them dancing. Yeah, and they kiss, and that's it. And they it. kiss, and then it's like credits. Robin Lively, whatever. Like, like, okay, great. Like, kind of yeah. weird. Yeah, kind of weird. Kind of weird. Kind of, kind of yeah. a little odd. Um, so we'll s- s- 
dive into our little plot right here. That was good, though. Yeah. Um, 15-year-old Louise Miller longs to be popular and catch the eye of high school quarterback Brad Powell. Um, however, Brad dates cheerleader Randa, and Louise is seen as an uncool underclassman with a similarly unpopular best friend, Polly. Um, during English class, Louise is mocked by her mean-spirited teacher, Mr. Weaver. Okay, also, sorry, I, I'm not trying to cut you off, but, like, her teacher was a fucking asshole. Oh, he was. Let me just say that. Like, first off, I think he kind of borderline, like, well, first off, borderline harassing her. Uh, yeah. Like, he was a fucking dick. Like, you could not get away with that shit now. Oh, absolutely not. Like, he was bordering, like, the line of, like, abuse. Like, not yeah. like, hitting her, but, like... Well, he was, like, he was saying something about, like, birth control or whatever, yeah. and you're just like, excuse me, I'm sorry I have to control my hormones, you right. asshole. Right, like, you don't know, like, you don't get out of my business, but like, he was a fucking asshole. And he got his when she made him a voodoo doll. Mm-hmm, there you go. Uh, sorry if that's a, that's a, that's something in there, but it's funny. It's fine. She makes it's him undress good. himself. And I'm like, that's right. Uh, yeah. What she should have been doing. She should have been putting pins in them. I know, right? But um, know. so she's mocked by her teacher, Mr. Reaver, who makes fun of a page from her um, diary that accidentally got stuck to her assignment. That's fucking embarrassing. I know. It's horrible. I was like, that's not her fucking poem or fucking uh, oh no. diary, is it? Oh my God, it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, that night after an unsuccessful audition for the part in school play, so that's what happened, uh-huh. um, she's bicycling home. Oh, yeah. Cause some, okay, yep. Yeah, yep. and then Brad's driving, but gets distracted by Randa. And then he almost, like, fucking hits her. her. (laughs) Like, what the hell? Um, In search of a phone to use, she enters Madame Serena's house, played by um, Zelda Rubenstein. Folks, people that don't know this, she was looking for a payphone. Yeah, she was looking for a payphone, or, like, maybe some nice person had a landline. That, yes. But payphones are what things in the 80s had that's what we had yes and you had to carry around like a quarter Uh or whatever to make your phone call yes so she does the palm reading with her and tells her that she's a witch she will develop powers on her 16th birthday and on louise's birthday the following week nobody shows up to her party and like oh yeah that was really shitty and like jesse said apparently louise and serena Serena, were apparently best friends and um back in the day yeah she was like you were you were this person, and I was this person, and yeah, we were best yeah. friends. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And so Polly informs Louise that most of her peers went to another party that was thrown by Randa, which for some reason she gets into her feelings about, but it's like, I don't think she was paying that much attention to you at all. I right. think she just had a party, right. and she didn't realize she you were having like, a party. She was like, oh, Louise, who's not popular, is doing a party, and we do it. Like, right. Um, who do you think's going to come to the party? The exactly. person who's more popular? Exactly. Yeah, so she tosses and turns in bed, and she that she'll soon, soon gain her powers. It's school the next day um her theater teacher mrs malloy um uh marsha wallace rest in, peace. Uh, rest in peace gives her a necklace with an amulet that she found mm-hmm. um among her costumes and tells her that she thinks it'll bring her good luck immediately she feels different and she begins to wear this regularly um she randa invites her to a school dance um with her cousin david who is a geek but is kind of hot honestly um, and he's like the weird one where she's like they're driving together and he's trying to like make out with her and like have her smoke weed and shit. Yeah, he kind of like he kind of like creeped me out. I was like, he this was guy a little is weird. A little like he was a hot nerd, but he was weird. Yeah, like sometimes watching these movies back, you're like, oh, that was like that was that was that's not good. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah he's weird. That's the vibe I got from. Like, leave her alone. <laughs> oh, completely. Yeah. Like, fuck off. And she what she oh she made him disappear. <laughs> she made him disappear and she never comes back. Yeah. He never comes he back. He just like is in the abyss. He literally is. I love it. Oh my god. God. But yeah, and she manifests Brad talk, coming over to talk to uh-huh. her, which I love because he's like, um, I want to talk to you about something or I wanted to say something. She's like, well, I have a little brother. I know men. And it's like, what the hell, dude? That'd be like you being like, yeah, I have a little gay brother. Like, I know about men. Right. You're like, okay. <laughs> which in this situation, maybe you are Louise Miller. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. She has a little gay ass brother. So there you go. Um, when she comes home, because her and her brother are fighting, mm-hmm. uh, she accidentally turns Richie into a dog, mm-hmm. but he gets unturned into a dog by being put in the bath yeah. and water will like reverse the spells or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, she is a recreate, she's a reincarnation of Modesty Miller, who was a witch that was born in 1636 and the amulet that she possesses belonged to her. Yeah. yeah. Serena gives her a book of magical spells to like study and she learns how to harness her powers so she helps Miss Malloy find like true love and mm-hmm. wealth so she doesn't have to be a teacher anymore also I just like how she's like oh we're going to like Rome or Italy or Spain and she just never returns like never hey, good for you Miss Malloy <laughs> she also gives Polly the courage to go after uh, the guy who she's so into who is just so funky 
<laughs> um, let, 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 let's talk about him for two seconds. Sure. Um, his little posse, like, they were just so... They would, like, break out in, like, um, like beatboxing or, like, freaking like, raps. The, the caucasity. The most, right. Exactly. Oh, my God. You couldn't say it better myself. But, like, they were just so odd. I'm like, okay, I guess this was just thing, a thing in the 80s. Oh, my God. Like, this movie is so And then so she does, like, a little rap with him. Like, this is... This it's not that amazing. This but, is interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. But, yeah, no, this movie is... It's taking, like, hip-hop in its early days in a way. But it's so white. It's so weird. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, whatever. It's it's iconic. It's yeah. camp. But, like, yeah. girl, what the sure. hell? Um, <laughs> Louise gets revenge on Mr. Reaver by undressing a voodoo doll all made in his image. That's love right. that. He deserves um, it. And then she also puts a love spell on Brad to make her fall in love with him. Louise then asks to be the most popular girl in school and so she makes a potion. Madame Serena makes a potion but for her to complete the spell she's like okay well you need to get something from this popular singer that you want to emulate or whatever. Oh, so yeah. she gets the um, she gets the jacket from her yeah. or whatever. And uh, yeah so that all happens. So then everyone is yeah, like... Yeah, I like how she yeah. like tries to go to the back and then she was like, oh, our name's on there, plus one. And she's like, no, your name's not on here. Like, it was not on here. And then she's like, she like pointed and it was on there and they were like... She's like, surprise, bitch. She was like, he's like, okay, I guess you can go back then. Like, yeah. fuck, okay, that, that would happen. So now that this has all happened, everyone is emulating and worshipping her. Um, after school, she is taken by Brad to an abandoned house where he gives her the kiss that she has so long Let's really just wanted. say how that could have went another way. Taking oh, her yeah. to an abandoned house. If Girl. this was a different type of movie, <laughs> that would be, uh, you know, like, fucking Michael Myers shit. I know, right? That would be like, eh, eh, eh. Oh, my God. However, Louise starts to wonder if, tra- if Brad truly does like her or if she's only attracted to him from the powers. Right, right, right. Um, at school, she you know is ascending the social ladder alienating Polly she also um accidentally uh makes Kiki break her leg and then she gets to oh have, she's like, like break a leg break like, a leg Kiki and if you look in the theater or you've been around any type of like watching anything like you know that's like not a bad thing like that's just what you say to people but, but the then theater. it like but it's a monkey's paw that. thing right. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a weird fucking thing like that. She did it. She broke her leg. Yeah. Um, And then even Polly's like, oh, what? Did you make her trip or whatever? Like, yeah. yeah. Polly was a little butthurt. I don't blame her. Yeah. Uh, Later, Brad asks Louise to the dance, but Louise, feeling guilty, declines his invitation. She attempts to look for a way to reverse all of her spells, but Serena explains that the real key to magic is believing in oneself. Um, she ac- she accompanies Louise to the dance where Louise gives the amulet to Serena and commits to being her true self. Upon seeing Louise, um, they cross the dance floor to be with her. Um, Brad crosses the dance floor and he and Louise dance together and kiss with Brad, showing that he really likes Louise for who she is and not because of her magic. Um, so I guess, like... But she still didn't go back to, like, how yeah. she was. No, that's a fair point, because, like, literally, it's like, okay, even if you learned, like, it's all in yourself, Brenda, or Judy, you know, Dorothy, or whatever. <laughs> but, like, yeah, no, but it's, it's like, okay, but also, like, what happened with Polly, and what happened with, like, all these... What happened to that hot nerd? Like, you know, I don't know, like... He's just, he's just chilling. Like, literally, like, yeah, so... I could understand your, if anything... It definitely yeah. felt flat for me. I was like, this is... Okay, this... And I'm like... So I'm like, and this is how it ends? Okay, got right, it. Right, so she's believing in herself now, I was like, so if I, like, if I scroll a little bit, like, you know, there's not going to be, like, an added scene. Like, right, like no. a post credit scene yeah, or something. No. You're just like, no, well... I, I guess the whole thing is her believing in herself, and that's what's doing it now, but then it's like, okay, that's great and all, but then what happens with Randa? What happens with... Uh, her brother, like, what happens to anybody? Well, here's, here's a good, um, here's a good, like, kind of, kind of comparison. I mean, I've got, I feel like you could literally take any type of movie, like, any type of comedy or romantic comedy or this, that, and the other. So, Katie, like, in Mean Girls, mm-hmm. the one that comes over from Africa, like, she's, wears what she wears. Not that it's bad, but then she gets in with the plastics and she's, like, all that. And then, but then she goes back, like, when she, when they're all, like, right. when it's all crazy. And it's at the end of the movie, she's kind of, like, back to, like, dressing how she did and, Right. All that. And it's like, that's like, okay, fine. Like, I can believe that. Like, things change. But, like, this teen witch was like, okay, well, I'm still going to, like, 
looked the way I look, how I wanted to, not mm-hmm. how it was. Not saying that she did was she was fine the other way, but it's right. like if you're really like I'm gonna be how I was, like you just don't see it. That's the thing. It kind of exactly. You kind of feel like well, it seems like you're just keeping yourself how you wanted it to be, even though you were hurting, you know, your friend's feelings, and or you were, you know, hurt. You were you were not you were only thinking of yourself, and you weren't thinking about other people. It's kind of what I, that, like the vibe I got from the show, yeah. the movie, and it should go if you believe in yourself, and then like just. It just kind of was weird. And I'm like, yeah. This is it. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, and again, when you're like eight watching this, you don't fucking understand that. You don't understand that, right? Exactly. Like, okay. And again, I don't think that movie, I don't think this movie is that deep in that or anything, but I think it's a fair criticism to make just because yeah. you're like, yeah, no, this does fall a little bit weird because you're like, what What ends up like, happening? It just ends very like abruptly. Like, oh, and that's it. Like they kiss and yeah. then credits. Like, cool. Well, this was something like, you know, Obviously, my it's my Casablanca at this point, um, Jawbreaker. Um, of course. But, like, you know, but that ending's not that bad because the worst thing that could happen to Courtney is that she is found out to be this murderer. Mm-hmm. And we it's not, you know, law and order Jawbreaker. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't need to see her get arrested or whatever, but her getting like, we corsages know what thrown at right. her. We know that, like, and then she's, she's crying at the end. She's... She's done. She's done, yeah. right. And that kind of works as an ending for me because it's like, yeah, no, I don't need to see She's the legal precinct. Exactly. Right. So in this situation, it's like, you'd make a good point with this because, yeah, it's Thank like, you. okay, so she learns to be herself and that yes now she's a witch or whatever and great but it's like okay but what happened to the rest of the people in your life though and you well, know whatever maybe you've become a bit of a better person yeah. but we don't see the we don't see it tie up exactly so here's my thing too now that you just said that with her being you know her finding out she's a witch so if she put everything on here like what she wanted to be she wanted to be popular she wanted the cute guy she mm-hmm. wanted this that and the other so she's a witch so she's gonna like always be a witch so like if she had everything she wanted like what is she going to use it for now like right if she's already done this and she's like well i don't want to you know be this type of way or whatever it is then are you just going to be like use it to like you know like make traffic stop or like you know right are you going to use it for like your own self gain or whatever because i kind of feel like that goes back into like using it for your selfishness yeah and which also could be argued okay that... this obviously is does not have a sequel or anything oh, like yeah. that but, like, I'm just saying, like, if she used it for, like, what any high school person would... Because that's yeah. just what, how they made fucking high school movies. Like, I want the hot guy. I want to be popular. Right. I'm a loser. I'm a nerd. I'm a wallflower. Nobody knows me. I want to be popular. <laughs> I want to be the most popular girl in the, you know, in the school. In school, yeah. But it's like, okay, but guess what? You don't stay in school forever. So, like, how are you going to use this, like, in your 20s? Like, what is what are you going to come of you being a witch? Like Exactly. So, uh, you know, well, of course, I mean, maybe there's certain things. But, like, it's kind of, like... You kind of just wonder. You're like, okay. okay. (laughs) And that's why when when she was like, oh, like, I'm still going to be how I am. It just kind of felt flat. But it's funny because then it's like, you could also argue about what is Madame Serena doing with this young girl? Right. Because her thing is like, she's... Well, remember, like I said, she like did something and then she like was able to get like... She was do something with like... Counterfeiting money. Oh, she was? Yeah, they were like making money. That was like one of the things that she had, um, Serena, uh, she had... (gasps) Uh, whatever her name helped do, yeah. I completely. But they were like making kind of money either and like forgot about that or I didn't realize. Or she like that. brought this frog to life to like be the guy, yeah. the guy, like, yeah. The guy, yeah. So she's kind of using this new yeah, power. The guy was like ribbit, 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 ribbit. Yeah, um, yeah. I it's the guy. Was. It's the guy. Like, um, but it's this older witch lady whose powers are probably not really a thing really much anymore right. and she's kind of using the powers of this of younger, younger witch, witch right, right, right. to do this because she's like oh and yeah we were tale friends that's as old as time that things will happen it's like, all about Eve ma'am it's showgirls it's all this like you're and, always looking um, you know or like Hocus Pocus when they were using like the younger like yeah. oh I need to be younger and then I'm gonna like kill these children over and it's like because yeah. they're needing like they're they need new shit it's always the, the the younger trying to like take over the older um, and, and the older then sometimes the older trying around. to like yeah, yeah trying to stay Younger. relevant mm-hmm. yeah yeah we're, we're getting deep on this movie that I don't think I, facilitates but it's all good I didn't think I would <laughs> no but it's fair because I think that's a fair criticism to make like I didn't even think about that but I was like yeah it's campy and fun but then you're like yeah but what about the ending like what <laughs> it's still fun but it's like it's just like weird it's just weird it's just like okay they kiss and like I said like five times before it's just it just it's falls not flat. How, it's it falls flat and I just don't when you think of a lot of movies out there like 
they if 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 a movie I mean because we can say there's fifty uh, you can, mm-hmm. fifty movies are the same they have the same type of plot they just have different characters they have different settings they have it in New York City they have right. it in California they have it in Canada they have it in another country wherever yeah it's all the same thing and it's all that but it's like at least like what happens is is like the girl gets popular or she's dowdy you know she's maybe yeah. ugly duckling whatever you want to call her she's a wallflower. She 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 does whatever it is, you know, she has a thing and she gets what she wants and all that. But then, you know, it's one of those things where maybe if she does something that this happens and it's bad or it's like you can't go back and change it. Mm-hmm. And then it's like but then at the end she's like, Oh, like I realized I'm just gonna go back to how I was. But like right. that didn't happen here and it's like I feel like that's how well I guess there are movies movies like that. They're like, I'm just gonna be how I am like and that's just right. how the movie stops. But like a lot of these movies they all follow the same plot. Like they all follow and then like at the end it's like she realizes who she was all along is like was just ha- who she was supposed to be. Yeah. And this was kind of like, well, she's like, actually I do like that I'm popular and that I'm hot and yeah. you know, everybody wants to be my friend and I got the hot guy and I'm just gonna keep it that way. Yeah, and I guess I've learned something along the way, I'll, but like I'll, yeah. I'll say sorry to my friend, but like is that apology even like legit? Exactly. Like is are you just saying it because you don't want your best friend mad at you or Right. Like because okay, again, I really don't think we were gonna deep with this movie. Go go ahead. I was just gonna say, like I was we're gonna, like, gonna be like, this isn't gonna be that long. But here's the thing too, okay, with them being in high school like, okay, is she going to be friends with Polly later on? Yeah. Are they even going to have, like, a lifelong friendship? Yeah, probably not. guess what? There's friends out there that you don't say lifelong friends with. Yeah. You know? And it's what, that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. Yeah. But it's like, I don't know. So it's just like, is she even going to, like... Is she going to say, like, I forgive you? And then just be, like, a bitch about it? And then just... Like, my thing is, is I wonder, like, if there was something later on. Would, would, would she be... And I'm not trying to dog this movie or Robin Lively or anything like that. Yeah. Would she just be, like... Is she going to... To me, it seems like the, if she's staying this way, is she going to be self-centered? Yeah, like she could be like a self centered, like entitled type of person now. Yeah, because that's how what happens with these movies. They're not. They're like you've changed. You're not the same person you are, Mm -hmm. and then all that. And it's like she's just how it's gonna be. I'm clearly reading too much, way too much into this. No, it's totally fine though, because you might as well. Like you know, that's what we're doing on a podcast. And also, I think you think about these things a little bit more when you're older. Yeah, and you're like, "Hmm." so looking back on this and watching a movie from the '80s, where you're like, huh. What is this? Well, and also I think if you watched it then and you were like, okay, let's say that podcasts were a thing in like 1990. Yeah, 1990, right, right, right. Because they were kind of a thing in the 2000s. Yeah. Like, they're just different. Maybe there was things that were podcasts, but we just didn't know them as podcasts. Right, right, talk right. About it. Who knows? But like, I wonder if people talk about it like right after this movie came out, they would be like, oh, this is this. I don't think they would think about it. I just think that there's been so many years that have went by and just so many different things mm-hmm. have come out with things that when you think about things like this, you kind of like think about it more. You're like, well. Yeah. The way this movie is, like, let's yeah. dive a little bit more into it. Like, well, and then you also have, like, so I think this kind of... And also, in... definitely the way things were made back in the 80s. Like, there's yeah. some things where you're like, that's questionable. I also think there's, like... You would have like... thought about in the 80s, but now, 35 years later... Yeah. There's a lot of shit that changes in Absolutely. Um, I also think that there... This movie set a bit of a precedent because it was about a teen witch, right? Before you had a bunch of witch content, really. Yeah, this is way before Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Absolutely. And then I think that's like kind eight, of... eight, seven, eight years before that. Yeah. The like before the movie. Because her show was, what, 98 96. or 96. 96, really? Yeah. Yeah, that's when the show came out. And then the movie was 95 or something Got like it. that. Got it, okay. I knew but, that it was like a year apart, okay. But Sabrina... But still, had, it was like five or six years before. Right, that. and it had existed in comic book form. But that was really it. Like, it was right. part of the art. It wasn't, comics. like, visual in your face, like, Right, it was live just action. something you'd read, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So this was something where it, it could set that, but then that's when you then have Sabrina um, on ABC and then the and WB even and all the that. Movie yeah. for Sabrina, the one with Ryan Reynolds and the, the OG one, and her show, they were kind of, like, funny ha-ha It was a sitcom. Type yeah. thing, sitcom, and it was that, so... I didn't really feel funny haha with Teen Witch. Not in a bad way. It yeah. just felt more like, I would maybe call it, it's not witchy, but um, maybe fantasy drama yeah. in a way. If you would yeah. maybe categorize it as that. that yeah, fantasy comedy. That. Like, there's not too many well, dramatics yeah, in there, but comedy, like, yeah. yeah. It's a teen movie. It's like that, but you know, it doesn't delve into like the drama drama of it, but I absolutely see what you're saying because, yeah, yeah Sabrina was a sitcom, really, yeah. uh, as a TV show. And then that kind of shows like what she did in high school, college, into her professional career and all right, that right, right. don't you worry I 
I partly want to do a Sabrina podcast. I do. Because that is one of my favorite sitcoms ever. Like, yeah. And I would watch it so again. Good. So good. But, um, and yeah. Salem was the best. I love Salem. Oh, so good. Uh, but yeah, but I think that's what's interesting is that that then kind of took that. Also, yeah. before I don't know how far we are or how close we are to ending it. But you do. And we will admit need to talk about the locker room scene oh yes <laughs> so i, I guess not go away from this until you talk i about know it. right um so i guess being that we talked about the plot and all that kind of fun shit what were some of the scenes that kind of like i guess i'll talk about them first and uh-huh. then you can tell me a uh-huh. little bit so some scenes that kind of like you know stood out to me specifically is definitely the i like boys scene um of the locker room so it's just you know louise is like getting changed for you know a gym or whatever and you just have a girl come in she's like hey cheerleaders i have the new cheers and it's literally just them just singing and you know dancing around about how much they like boys and i was like wow all the homosexuals ever could just use this to come out and let me tell great. you jesse's exact text message to me and it was oh, hilarious please do. okay let me call it <laughs> this is how you knew we were gay but no that scene's actually super fabulous i love it it's just like and they're also being super silly with it too like it's not that they're taking too much yeah it's but it comes out of left field if anything i mean for sure like, it's just kind of there. And then she's just, like, watching them. Jesse sent me a video of him watching Teen Witch where it was Absolutely. that scene that I like boys. And he said, truly gay rights. I said, truly. And he said, I should have just showed you this when I came out. I said, LOL, you should have. And you said, would have made it so much easier. I believe that. So, yes, there you yeah, go. That sorry. was my dramatic reading. Um, but, yeah, no, it's... But then it's kind of like, how much did they want the camp in this, I guess? Right. Because I think, like... They were like, okay, cool, we're going to make this, like, movie that's not, like, really raunchy or whatever. But then I think turning it into these, like, musical numbers, you were like, yeah, let's do this. But it does come out of left field, though, I will say that. But I did, and I think the joke amongst gay people, especially people who like this movie, is just like, you know, this seems so fucking weird, but it's kind of great, though. Yeah. Like, it's so okay. Like, I'm like, I guess great that you like dance, boys. I guess we have, like, a dance sing, singing number here. Okay. Sure, great. I do love the beginning of this movie with the sexy sax and the never gonna be the same again. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. so good. <laughs> uh, and then it's so the rest 80s. of the movie. Oh, my yeah. God, yeah. My scene, well, not that I really have a scene. Um, I do want to say the scene where they do the abandoned house. That's, like, an interesting, remember, it's, memorable Yeah, scene. weird, but, yeah. Um... <laughs> him taking his shirt off he's like I'm gonna leave it here I'm like okay but um I guess I'd have to say maybe like maybe like the dance scene at the end because I feel like that's what sticks out to me yeah not that it was anything like good or bad with it but like right. I think it's just what like I remember most about it mm-hmm. is that and also the part where uh her friend is doing like the rap with the like the, top like, that that like that was interesting and you're like okay um but yeah, other than that like that's really it like yeah it's like that and then it's like she had her scenes at Madame Serena's house. So there's really that, like, yeah, that's pivotal kind of boring, one. To be honest. But yeah, like, the one where she's, like, kissing her, I'm like, okay, like, yeah. I get it. Yeah. I and think then, the... like, the one with her friend and, like, her, like, going up to the guy she likes. Yeah, like, right. Top that, yeah. <laughs> um, I think the beginning of the movie is, like, really fun. I like the scenes with, um, Richie in them. So, like, you know, the you're a dog, a dog, and all that. I, I like that. And then him turning into a dog. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, and then there's, like, some... Oh, yeah, the scenes, yeah. um, the scene, that the other, I, I completely forgot about that, but, like, the teacher, like, the voodoo one. Like, oh, she yeah, did, like She, fun. like, exactly revenge on him, and she's, like, because, like, she has, like, he, she, he goes to her car, Rosh. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Um, so, but, yeah, when she, like, when she had it, and he was, like, in the front of the class and then she like he's he like she's like she like takes a shoe off and like she just flicks it across the room mm-hmm. and then he's like he's taking a shoe off and they're like what the hell's going on he has and he's like why am i doing this right but it's just so funny that like she's that part's pretty funny too that, yeah like her like her dressing the doll because she was like okay bitch all right yeah we're gonna get revenge <laughs> you deserve but yeah an asshole. yeah and i think like you know generally like i think we kind of hit on it already but like yeah those are the scenes for me that there's kind of really interesting vignettes throughout or like just little scenes that come mm-hmm. through, mm-hmm. you know, generally. But like, I also think just like as a whole, like, yeah, these characters, like you were saying, like she starts off as like this kind of homely, you know, mm-hmm. wallflower girl. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of wonder like, okay, I see your progression, but then what's going to happen after now? Right. Because now I'm just like, 
so you're not going to be self-centered anymore, I guess? Right. Or, like, because you kind of let it take over you a little exactly. bit, you know, with that. So what's going to happen Which is afterward? what normally happens in movies or shows. And then they kind of, like, go, they take a step back and kind of, like, look right. within themselves. Or, like, they have a moment of but realization. Come to, Jesus, right. come to Jesus. Or they have somebody talk to them, like, whoever it may be. Right. And then they're like, well, and then they'll be like, you were, like, you were, the, you know, you were just right all, all along. And right. Like, okay. You no, always had it inside of you, yeah. right, right, right. But yeah, I motivational think motivational speech, if you might you exactly. Know, if, you, if you, if you would the, say. the teen, the teen speech, the uh, you'll hear about it soon whenever I do this episode. But I'm doing not another teen movie not too long from now. Yes, and that movie is horrible, but it's like funny in a way, and it's like the Mr. T speech in that. I really feel like I'm gonna laugh my ass off when I listen to that. Episode. Oh my god, I have a great guest for it too. So be on the lookout for that, everybody. Um, I'm recording this like. I'm recording that episode, like, after we've recorded this oh, one, cool. obviously. Cool. But, um, yeah, it's a wild movie. It's also on Paramount Plus right now, so you oh, can go I watch it. probably have to watch it. It's been a long time since so I watched that one, too. It's ridiculous and crazy. But anyway. The, dude, those first couple, uh, that, that first scene, crazy. It's crazy. But anyway, so. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Oh, my God. Anyway, so, yeah, there's that. But, yeah, so, and then everyone else kind of is just, it's all about Luis and, I guess, Polly in a way, mm-hmm. I guess. But even it feels like it's all about Luis because it is Teen Witch, right? So, but um, but that's a fair that's a fair point to make of just like what happens after this, and I'm, I'm not mad at her for maybe staying popular or maybe she just has changed from the homely girl to not being that mm-hmm. now, which is fine. But it's like, yeah, we we didn't really get to see that tied up though, right, so exactly. we didn't get to see that loose end tied. And for. Some people that's okay with them, but some people like for me, I like I like to see like a nice progression yeah. on the end of the movie. So I'm like, got it. Yeah, totally. That's or totally or fair. if you know that there's gonna be something new, usually there's like some type of about the story, but this one was just like okay. Yeah, and then because it only made twenty seven thousand dollars at the box office, but or news that I think I thought Team Witch and Sabrina were pretty much the same movie, but they're not. Oh, right. So. Yeah. No. Totally fair. Maybe um, if I maybe if I made maybe if I just mush them. Mm-hmm. into like one movie I'll be like okay I'll like the ending like, exactly right. it'll tie up to me yeah yeah and then you have a whole TV show you can watch it's exactly. great but yeah yeah I think that's everything I can think about when it comes to Teen Witch we're coming up on an hour 20 so that's not too bad but yeah no this is one of our shorter ones it is if it you've is. ever listened to oh Clueless was like two and a half hours <laughs> oh my god Legally Blonde was like two two hours two hours Clue on Tension was like two yeah so yeah we are, so, we, look we, we cutting down time look at that but yeah um, I guess what are your closing thoughts your Jerry Springer thoughts on this film as a whole final thoughts yes also R.I.P. to Jerry I know um Jerry Jerry yes um, <laughs> sorry to do that um, my my closing remarks on this movie are uh, watching it as an adult is a lot different mm-hmm. as watching it is pff, as watching it as a kid but uh, as I feel like so many things are sometimes they aren't there sometimes you guys feel the same um, but yeah this movie was, was a decent watch I mean mm-hmm. it was definitely cheesy as all hell let's yes. just let's just let's just get that out of the game. right it's it's cheesy as hell but um you know like I said it was a fever dream but, but way back in the beginning of the podcast it's a fever dream of a movie i remember watching it was like okay completely put it in the back of my head mm-hmm. and then i watched it again and have you ever been talking to people and like and saying oh i remember this movie back in the day. i got it and it's just like this movie comes up in your brain as like a random like thought mm-hmm. and you're like talking to a friend or like a co-worker or somebody and you're just like hey like that's how it was for me so um yeah like the closing thoughts like it was a decent you know movie it can't be yet definitely i definitely think it falls in the campy yeah aspect of it but, um, you know, I mean, it's fine. Um, I probably really won't watch it and, yeah. uh, very often or, you know, maybe maybe in another couple years. Maybe yeah. I'll be like, oh, let me, let me watch this or something. But, you know, it's it's fine for what it was. It definitely is fine for what it was made in 1989, mm-hmm. 35 years ago almost. So that's just, I feel like how a lot of movies were made back then. Like, yeah. well, not a lot. I shouldn't say that because, like, I feel like if you put this against, like, the movies that we were talking about earlier, like, they were all completely different. Yeah. Um, but you always got to have a movie that gets out in left field, which I feel like this movie is. Right. Um, but yeah, like, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a decent, like, teen movie in a sense, you know. Um, you know, but it's, it's, it's fine. But I just, yeah. I just, what I kind of like about it the most is how Fever Dream feel this shit feels. Yeah. Like. Absolutely. Is, it was that one of those movies where I was like, this movie I remember watching, and it's a fever dream. And then when I saw like the same thing again that I watched when I was like yeah. 20 years ago, 
I was like, I remember this. Like, what was this? And I'm like, okay. But yeah, yeah that's my closing remarks of it. I, I like that. That's good. Um, I think my closing remarks are that this movie is something where I would say that the director maybe had like the slightest control of it. Um, but I don't think he completely knew what he was doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that shows a I little could, bit. Yeah, I was going to say um, that, yeah. Because I think even like Polly, uh, Mandy um, Ingberg or whatever her name is, um, I think she even kind of said like, yeah, that was a reshoot. Like that was not in the initial movie. Mm-hmm. And also like the guy who directed this, mm, he wasn't mean or anything. I just don't think he knew what he was doing. Yeah. And it sort of shows that a little bit. And I think if anything, this is a fun campy time. I do for enjoy sure. this movie for the camp of it and just how ridiculous it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's super fun and fine. And I think the way that kind of Polly reacts, you know, to Louise just kind of dumping her away, I think is completely valid and kind of realistic, if anything. And she wants to be able well, to talk also, about Also, but... really, not to like heart back on that, like, you know, I know we're trying to close it up, but yeah. I think another thing when you said that about Polly, it's like, I think another thing that kind of like hits on it for me, like now watching it, you know, now or yeah. watching it in the past few years, just like so much stuff has changed from late 1990 mm-hmm. to now, as I've said previously. Um, that, you know, so much now it's like we want to, um, stand with our best, our friends yeah. and, you know, be like, we don't want to treat them that way. And I feel like that happened a lot in these type of older movies mm-hmm. and all that. And I feel like now watching it, you're like, well, damn, that's fucking rude. Yeah. Now I feel like you're not going to see it as much in movies. Not saying you won't. Right. But I feel like it was definitely more of a thing that you might've saw more in the eighties, you know, the mid eighties when they, like, the big teen films were coming mm-hmm. out and all that. You know, definitely not the 70s. Like, things like that. That wasn't really, yeah. like, things. But, like, definitely 80s. They were doing... Like, that was, like, the rise. Of, right, like, right. It was, like, the rise of, like, t- all kinds of teen college movies and stuff yeah. like that. And even went into the 90s for sure. Mm-hmm. But I feel like over the past, like, te- maybe, like, past, like, last, like, 10 years, you really... You see more girls, like, in friendships. You see right. them more, like, bonded together, sticking together, like, fuck that guy, fuck that... Whatever. Mm-hmm. And, um, not that Brad did anything wrong, I guess, but, like... You know, it's just kind of, like, looking back on it, like, it's, maybe it's, like, the feminist in me, but, like, (laughs) like, it's just kind of, like, it's fucked up what she does to her, and you're, like, okay, this was back in 1989. Right, 1889, yeah. Right, but, um, but it's just, like, now, like, movies nowadays, like, they really don't harp on that, like, they're usually, like, the complete opposite, where, like, that probably wouldn't have happened. Yeah, totally. Or, like, or, you know, maybe now if the movie was made, like, they would put, like, a boy as her friend. Mm -hmm. Now, that obviously could go one of two ways, because they could be, like, you know... Because people could even go and say maybe Polly had a crush on, you know. Sure. You never know. Like, you know, and the, the, maybe there were underlying things. We don't know. But if, the, if, you know, they made her, you know, it could be like a Ducky thing where, like, her best friend yeah. was up guy and, you know, Ducky and Andy or whatever. And he, like, loved her from afar, you know. And he was like, oh, you know, what, marry me or whatever. But it's like that, could, you know, so if her boyfriend was a boy, you know, there's kind of all these, all these type of stipulations. Right. But, um, but, yeah, you know, I just don't feel like you see that really in like movies like that are out now or yeah. that are could be somewhat maybe similar to this but um definitely in the 80s is just more of a common thing where totally. you kind of dump the friend and it's like oh screw you like you're you're a nerd i'm not gonna be friends with you right or it's like okay but like that friend was there for you for like all these years and you're trying to like dump him like a like mm-hmm. sack of hot potatoes yeah right? like how right. yeah right no that's fair i think this movie is fun for its camp value for and sure. it's just like ridiculousness but yeah i i do like it i don't but think clearly I would... you can sit down and think about it like in some ways it can be a little problematic not in a really bad way yeah but like if you really think about it I, I agree um but maybe you just don't really think about it like that i, I don't think i would own it or anything personally but i would probably I watch it, it on five dollars yeah exactly i'd watch it on like streaming or whatever that'd be fun um, so yeah, I, I think that's uh, my closing facts about this, or my closing thoughts on this movie in particular. Uh, but Sarah, I thank you so much for coming on the show. It's very nice. Thank you for having me. It's of been course, a while. I know, right? Um, but it was nice to have this conversation and get your thoughts on it. Yes. Also, um, I want to just plug that we are going to be doing um, what maybe two or three. Pods is up this um. Oh yes, this, we're gonna be doing one later year. this month, uh, later this year. We're gonna um, be doing. Well, what we're not gonna say what we're doing, but it's oh sorry, we're gonna be celebrating doing... a little um little anniversary oh, uh, later this year. Is the other one an anniversary? Mm-hmm. It, what is it? The other one that we're doing that that's. Oh, that's another anniversary okay, as well. Okay, so we're doing some ones that uh, because apparently this year for two thousand twenty four, a lot of things are turning thirty five. Twenty. Twenty. All this, yeah. Um. 
So we got some good stuff 25, coming up. 25, yeah. So yeah, I got some good things coming up. So. I feel like I've been off for a little bit. Sorry, guys. But, um, <laughs> you know, it is what it is. Life happens. Yeah, of course. But be, 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 um, be sure to turn it, tune into those when, when they do come out. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah. We have one coming up, like, probably next month when you're hearing mm-hmm. this. And then the other one is going to be in a couple months yeah. from now. Probably where the we're, fall time. Yeah. Where we're going um, to... That's gonna, exciting. I'm it's excited. Be I'm fun. excited for both of them, but I'm really excited for the other one. I know, right? <laughs> uh, do you want to plug your social media if anybody wants to follow you or anything? Yeah, if you want to follow me on Facebook... I'm Sarah Heidelberg, as we stated before uh, when Jesse introduced me, mm-hmm. and uh, I am on Instagram. You're on Instagram, Instagram under Rainbow Paradise sixteen, mm-hmm. and I think that's it. I think that's it too. Yeah. Um, and you can follow the show on Instagram at Cult Cinema Circle, and on Twitter at Cult Cine Circle, and on Letterboxd at Jesse J E S S E Kremp K R E M P. So you can see all of the stupid movie reviews I put on there, and you can maybe try to see what I'll be covering on the show in the future. Um, and then please rate, comment, subscribe. Give five stars on your podcatcher of choice, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all those places you get your podcasts, you know, uh, it gets eyes on the the show and gets, you know, people listening to the back catalog. We have reached over a hundred episodes at this point, so that's awesome. Yeah. We just did um, a high five. Sorry. Yes, we did. No, you're good. Your Leaving it in. Um, <laughs> that's awesome, though. But yeah, so it's super you've cool. Been, he's been doing this. You'll be doing this two years in August? In, in August, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's so, so awesome because I've been here since the beginning. Yeah. When you wanted to... Um, to do it, yeah. To do it. And, and it's just so... like It's it's, it's crazy because like, you were like, you know, you're like 10. Because you started with like the 10 movies, like mm-hmm. the 10 movies that whatever. That, to get to know me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay. And then, you know, then you got to like 20 and you're like, oh, okay. And then you're like, you just like kept like rocking them up, rocking them up, rocking them up. And you're like, hey, you want to come on? I'm like, yeah, like that'd be awesome. Like that'd be so fun to just sit there and like like shoot the shit like just talk about stuff yeah yeah, yeah. literally just like forget the bike friends there and just talk but like crazy it's been over 100 that's, that's crazy it's crazy it's awesome. yeah it's really cool um but yeah and so next week we're gonna be covering um a little movie from 1999 it's gonna be celebrating it's 20 i guess what is it 25, 25 years yep. yeah um, so if i'm turning 35 1999 will be turning 25 oh my god yes and uh we're gonna be covering a little movie called election from 1999 this is a reach to watch for you mm-hmm. um, reach for spoon. yes reach for the spoon Matthew my, Matthew Rucker, yep so yeah super fun super good yeah i have a fun guest for that so we'll have a good time nice, nice. um yeah and uh i think that's everything but uh as always thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the Cult Cinema Circle podcast. And remember, I'm hot and you're not. But if you want to get with me, I'll give you one shot. Top that. (laughs) Take care. Bye.